So, first of all, our observations of the elbow will involve normally our client standing or seated. Um, we'll leave Jade seated for this purpose. And just with the elbow extended, we would look, as always, for any signs of discoloration, any swelling around in this area that might be evident on the surface. And also we would check what we call a carrying angle at the elbow. Um, and we would expect something like 15 to 20 degrees in this instance uh, of that angle there. If this is different from the other limb, it may be an indication that there is actually swelling within the joint and it will change that angle. Um, there is also another condition known as a gunstock deformity, so instead of a valgus angle at the elbow, um, it will move in a varus angle and that is known as a gunstock deformity. Okay, so now we'll look at doing special tests of the elbow. First of all, a valgus stress test. There are two types that we will do here, um, both checking for the uh, integrity of the ulnar collateral ligament down the medial aspect of the elbow. So the first one we do is to take the, the wrist in this position, support the upper arm like so, flex the elbow to about 20 to 30 degrees of flexion, and then just move the arm across in a valgus angle like so, stressing that ulnar collateral ligament. Because the ulnar collateral ligament is made up of more than one part, there's a second way that we can test this, still with a valgus angle, but we make sure during flexion that we maintain that valgus angle and just compress like so. And Jade should feel that again down the medial aspect of the elbow. To check the radial collateral ligament on this side, we perform a slightly di different maneuver and we ask our client to pronate the former forearm which draws the ligament round and we can now use the same valgus angle to test the integrity of that ligament. So the client should feel um, the, the stress uh, and again if there was an injury there they would certainly feel it around this part um, of the elbow at this stage. So once again flexed to about 20 to 30 degrees and now supporting in much the same way, just drawing the elbow out like so, and we'll check that area there. Another condition that we should mention at this point, but point out that uh, there's no difference in the way that we would test, is something called Little League's elbow, and basically the history and the subject themselves would tell us more about this condition, since it affects young athletes um, who've been particularly involved in um, large amounts of throwing type activities and this with the young growing bones results in an avulsion fracture uh, down here so the ligament pulls a, a part of the bone away. So we would still do the same valgus stress test um, but with a different age of a, the subject and a different background and history it might tell us something different uh, if there were pain, if was pain in that area. Obviously if it's avulsed completely then there wouldn't be any stress and there may be very little pain. Okay, so we'll move on with some other tests now. First of all, um, for the problem where there might be osteophytes in the joint, we simply do a rhythmical and repeated hyperextension of the elbow joint. So all I would be doing is just this fashion about eight to ten times just to check whether there's any impingement or any impediment to that movement which would indicate fragments floating around in the joint and just limiting that movement. So another test here would be purely to observe and palpate for any swelling around the electronome process. So this bony prominence here, um, if you get a bursitis problem, otherwise known as student's elbow, this would be inflamed around this area and there would be varying degrees of severity for that. So we would check the temperature around there and palpate for any swellings or any fluid content to detect that. Okay, if we now move on and just talk about and show a little bit to do with medial and lateral epicondylitis, um, we would need to palpate for the medial and lateral epicondyles. So if I first of all palpate the medial epicondyle, I can feel here the origins of the forearm or the wrist flexors 
And that would be my first check if I, there was any indication from my client that they might be suffering from this particular condition. If I were to go on and check further, I would want to passively stretch these tissues. And to do that, it's not just wrist extension, but also to bring the wrist round like so, further into supination, and that will put a lot of stress down this area and the client will certainly feel the tissues being stretched there. And of course we would do resisted uh, wrist flexion, so we would encourage our client to do this movement against resistance. Okay, Jay, just build up slowly, and once again they might feel problems in this area. If you're treating either a medial or a lateral epicondylitis, remember that both the forearm flexors and extensors work together for any gripping action, so you're likely to feel perhaps tension, protective mechanism taking place in both groups of muscles. If we're doing a lateral epicondylitis, we will feel for the lateral epicondyle here, and again, just palpate around the soft tissues where the origins are like so. And again, we would do resisted wrist extension to check for the strength of those forearm flexors, and then to stretch, we would flex the wrist like so, and go further into pronation, and you can perhaps see the skin starting to rotate around there. And again, the stress will be felt in this region here. So very important when you're dealing with medial or lateral epicondylitis conditions that you do all of these checks and in rehab you make sure that the strength and flexibility is maintained as you bring them back to full competitive activity. Another check would be for tinnel sign and I can just move your elbow around there. You can feel in this area here there's a sort of groove between the electron and process and the medial epicondyle. And in that space there, if I were to palpate quite firmly, I would feel um, the ulnar nerve. And a tinnel sign simply involves tapping in that area just to see if that causes any problems with pain or any sensations um, uh, radiating down towards the hand. The last test would be a posterolateral draw test. And with the elbow flexed, we would simply stabilize like so, and position the hand here. So stabilizing the upper arm, all we're doing is just pushing down on the forearm to try and gap that joint or distract that joint, and that will test the general integrity of the ligaments holding the joint in place.